Today on Zeno Julian, we have a Mir M20 mini DLP pocket projector, and it doesn't work. It doesn't turn on or anything, which is really a shame, because this pocket projector looks really nice. No flex to it at all whatsoever. A really solid build. However, if you see these on eBay, I would avoid purchasing them because they also have a lockout code on a lot of them that you need to put in before the unit will activate. Well, let's start with... Uh, Taking what looks to be these little screw covers off. Using a sewing needle for that. Bet you it's held together with four little Phillips screws. Come on out. There. And now it can't feel pain anymore. Alright, Phillips screwdriver. Now when a projector doesn't turn on, uh, it's usually something that can be easily fixed. So. Something like the USB port where it can't charge anymore, uh, bad battery, bad uh, power control chip, or DC to DC converter, or a fuse that is blowing out on the board. So hopefully this will be pretty easy to get operational. Alright, let's see what's inside. No, nope, we're going for something metal. This could be brutal, kids. Yeah, we're in. All right, let's take a look and see what we have. Let's see, a large EMI shielding on the bottom, so it looks like that's going to come off next. And what I'm going to do is remove the battery, and I'm going to put the battery on a charger by itself. Charge it up and see if there's a problem with power getting into the projector, into the battery, or... If it's something past the battery. One of the easiest things to uh, diagnose or use to diagnose what the problem is in the projector. Let's see any other screws? Not that I see. No, yeah, one right here. Let's get off that copper tape. All right. Take out the brains. Who does this? Bad 
application of copper tape. Did you really need this much? Really? It'll be fine. And our little optical engine right here. Let's take a look and see what we have inside. So I'm assuming that's going to go up to the LEDs, the green blue LEDs, and it's going to be your DMD ribbon cable connection. Now let's, let's take out those cables. See if we can get further into it. Bar. If I can't get this working, we'll take a look and uh, see what's inside the optical engine. I'll mostly, most likely do that even if I do get this working, that's usually what happens on this channel. A little focus gear. Thermal pads? Nope, no thermal pads. Oh, yeah, right here. Okay. So here's the uh, whole optical engine, which will have the DLP chip on the back. So, probably right here. LEDs over here on the side, so probably be uh, the green LED, red and blue LED. Uh, the, all the dichros for sending the light in. Mirror probably here. Off to here. Another little reflector in there it seems. And the front focus assembly. Wow, that's a very small travel. Alright, let's see about getting the uh, main board out and the battery. Be uh, held in a little bit by the HDMI and USB port, so I'm going to try and pull it up this way. Hopefully, the battery is not glued in. That is taped in. Okay, well, let's try the board. Doesn't want to come out. We're going to have to go ahead and piece out of the battery. Then we can pull the board out. Battery iron takes like 10 seconds to warm up, and we'll be going in no time. That's leaded free solder for sure. Uh, the speaker. All right, at this point, the projector battery is on my charger and charging. So let's take charge of trying to figure out how to fix this thing. And the problem is definitely the USB port has a lot of physical damage. Let's try to take a look and see what we can do to fix it. So, the uh, two outer areas on the USB port where it attaches to the ground plane for structural support, those are sheared off. Looks like we can reset of those. Looks like the far left pin is uh, pulled off the pad. 
and the remaining four pads are completely lifted off the board so can't really fix those so the first thing I'm going to do is the supports and make sure the USB port is in place and then on the right pin which is going to be the positive input that goes to where that it looks to be a diode and capacitor I'm going to run a wire so let's get on repairing this let the repair critiquing begin I just want to make sure that uh, level with the board I want to push it down a little bit Next, I'm going to try to reconnect the ground pin. Alright, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's reconnected quite nicely. Alright, now the hardest part. It's going to be running a small wire from the positive pin over to probably the other end of the capacitor. It's going to be the largest area to solder on. I'm going to use some small wire like this. It's just a plastic coated wire, not silicon wire. Much nicer if it was, but work with what I have. For best results, I may have to do this uh, off camera, but we'll tr we'll try. That didn't work. Uh, that looks better. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and inspect it. And uh, then I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, super glue along the back here. That's where those pads came undone. Just to get a little bit more support. Once again, being very careful that uh, the glue does not get inside of the connector. But yeah, should work. All right, now that the USB port looks fixed, I'm going to reinstall the main board, connect the light engine up, see if it powers on, and if it uh, charges for the USB port. Oh, here's that lower portion, and it goes in this way. The battery also does have a bit of a charge on it now, so I'm betting it'll boot right up. Uh, the speaker needs to get tucked in under there. Yep. Yep. That works. That works. Okay. Cool. No optical engine.
Okay, last thing to do is reconnect the battery. Hopefully and see if it runs. Alright. Should be fully ready to test. Okay, on button. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's see what we're getting. Are we getting any kind of menu? Yes, we are. All right, cool. Well, let's take a good look at the optical engine. See what's inside. But it looks like the repair. For now, is successful. Of course, now we got to test the USB port. See what it shows for any kind of charging indicator. A lot of these don't like to charge with the unit on, so I'm gonna turn off the unit. See if there's any kind of uh, indicator light to tell me that it's charging. Not that I see. All right, let's check to see if the voltage is higher with the uh, charger plugged in on the battery. So, unplug. Maybe uh. Like 3.7, 3.8, maybe 3.9, not fully charged. 3.75. Alright. Uh, plug in. It's everything 3.75. Oh, yeah, we got a higher voltage. So it is in fact charging. Take a look, see if it goes back to 3.75 with it unplugged again. Oh yeah, we gained some voltage. Okay, cool. I'm going to let this charge on its own for a little while. And uh, we'll get inside of this. But it does look like it's a successful repair. At this point, we should have a good charge in the battery. Let's test out the voltage. And we're at... 4.19. So, just about fully charged. I did notice there's actually a little red uh, charging light on there. So, yeah, that does work. Let's take a look at the optical engine. So, I got this side right here, which is going to be where the red, green, and blue LEDs and the dichroic reflective pieces of glass are going to be. So, it looks to have a thin piece of plastic on there, as most of these do. And I'm going to use a razor blade to carefully pull that up and out. Try to keep the adhesive as good as I can. So these little pieces of plastic, what they do is that uh, they keep dust and stuff out of the optics. And uh, they also cut down uh, any reflections, which is why they're black. There we go. See what we have inside. Oh, yeah, pretty uh, typical layout. Oh, looks like we have the green LED here, the focusing lens for that. So that's a copper backplane for heat uh, dissipation. 
And on this side, we should have the red and the blue LEDs. Uh, that could be the green, this could be the red, and the blue as well. Um, you'll see that there is this little sliver. You'll notice that uh, it's thinner on this portion than it is here. It's a little thicker. And uh, one of the sides is coated for the reflect blue and red. And the other side is probably for the pass green. That's the first time I've seen one piece of uh, glass like that. But uh, yeah, there looks to be a little bit of a taper to it, which makes sense because usually it's two pieces of uh, mirrored glass. The taper is so that the blue light gets reflected off and the red light gets reflected off at slightly different angles. So that way they line up because you got one LED right next to the other and it's not going to be completely in the same area. I'm going to turn this on and see what it looks like on the inside as it's running. you're going to see a little bit of a uh, rolling shutter effect so yeah that's the green LED right there like, like that and uh, that's the red and blue so red and blue LEDs here come off here uh, the red is reflected off one surface the blue is reflected off the uh, other surface the green passes right through you have a little uh, lens array, lenslet array right here, which just gives a little bit more uniformity to the light. There you go. So, right there is the lenslet array, and another additional lens right there. So, I'm guessing that right here is going to be a mirror, and the mirror is going to reflect down onto the uh, DMD. And then reflect out this way through the lens. And the only way we're going to verify that is to take a look at the other side. I'll go ahead and put that little piece of plastic on this side again. almost in the right position. There we go. And carefully flip it around to the other side. I don't want to stress those uh, cables too much. They connect to the LEDs and the DMD. And then we got another piece of plastic right here in the bottom and that'll be that one mirror and the optical path for focusing so then carefully lift this up All right, let's see what we have. All right, just as I thought. So, you can see right there, there's a tiny little mirror of the light. All right, yeah, the light comes in through here, goes onto here, goes into that lens, onto the DMD, and then that uh, reflects out. There's a spherical, uh, sorry, cylindrical lens right here. And you can see the DMD underneath there. So light comes in this way, hits the DMD, comes out, and you change your focus by moving that final lens assembly back and forth. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple setup optically. All right, now that the Mir M20 mini pocket projector is fixed, let's go ahead and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. Now, my initial impressions were the very nice feeling projector, very nice and slim, easy to fit in a pocket, 
Love the uh, matte finish on the back. Nice texture. Tripod mount. Yeah, pretty good. Well, or is it? Let's go over the dark sides of this projector. Now, I only have HDMI in. Does it support anything else? Might support uh, MHL. Outputs 15 lumens at 480 by 360 pixels, so not the brightest, and the resolution is terrible. So let's go ahead and turn it on, compare it with some of my other projectors. We'll first compare it to my AAXA projector. Now, this projector is my favorite for a couple of reasons. It has everything you want on it in a functional budget pocket projector tripod mount, internal speakers, active cooling, SD card, USB stick support, composite in, and the MHL HDMI in. The resolution on this is also better. I think 960 by 590, but QHD. Um, not as bright, but the image is a lot better. The focus and throw uh, range is also much better on this projector. Go ahead and take a look. So, running with the projector at about 7 inches away. Let's see if we can focus it and get a nice image. And we can't. And it doesn't work very well. But if we bring the axe at the same distance away, focus that in, we can get a nice clear image on that. There we go. And uh, they're about the same distance away right now. So, Axa just looks better. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it a little bit more. So we're about two foot away, and uh, we get a nice clean image at that distance. Once again, we'll compare it to the Axa. So the uh, Mirror M20 is brighter, but uh, the resolution just not as good, and the function isn't there. Let's go ahead and compare it with the uh, Rift 6 projector. I love this projector. It's a good projector. The only downside is it needs a remote to operate. Though I can't suggest this one either, but it does have SD card support. Let's go ahead and turn this projector on. The Rift 6 is about twice as bright as the Mirror M20 with a resolution that is greater. I don't exactly remember what the resolution of the Rift 6 is. I rarely use it, but. No, it looks like it has a faster refresh rate too, because that looks pretty trippy. We view the Rift 6 is a bit brighter, about twice as bright. And uh, the resolution, the output clarity, just, just destroys the Mirror M20. So, a much better projector. Yeah. That's... It's not, uh, it's not the best projector. Mm. It's Projector Mania on Xeno Dilodon. Well, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Oh, before I go, let me show you the worst, the worst thing about this projector. Okay. Here's 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 the absolute absolute unforgivable Could you at least center that? Come on. Well projector works, it's time for it to go back home. That's it for this video, though I have a bunch of cool stuff coming up. So, as always, stay tuned for more.